Welcome everyone to another night review. Today we have the 2021 Ford Bronco Sport First Edition. And in this night video, you're gonna see all these exterior lights, the interior lights, and take it out on the road and see just how well these headlights do. Let's get started. Hey y'all, my name is Nolan. Thank you so much for watching. After you've watched this video, if you like what you've seen, be sure to smash the like button. And if you wanna see more night videos showing off features like this, be sure to subscribe down below. Let's get into it. So starting off with these exterior details, first of all, I do have a full daytime review if you wanna check that out. And this is the Bronco Sport, not the big Bronco. So this is a smaller Bronco, kind of with a unique market. And first of all, let's look right up front here. We've got LED headlights, full LED headlights. And look at that circular ring. That is very kind of, I don't even know. It's just really cool, something you don't always see and that portion coming on the inside. So you've got LED high beams, LED low beams, and LED daytime running lights. And as we shed over here, you've got Bronco written across the front grille. We've got an LED blinker in here. So full LEDs, plus I believe it's Big Bend and up will give you LED fog lights. But this is the first edition, and these just look really cool. And this paint color is called Area 51. It looks different in all different types of light. So right now it looks a little bit darker, kind of a little bit more grayish, bluish greenish, but in the daytime, it's definitely brighter. I, I like it a lot. I think it looks really cool. It's something unique and you've got the black top. So you've kind of got a two-tone look. You've got the LED marker light on the side. That's nice and bright. So you've got good visibility here. We've got large tires. So you've got 29 inch tires. So this thing is a little bit more off-road capable than some of you would probably expect, which is pretty cool. And maybe you expect it to be, but it, it's, it's semi-capable. And as we come around to the back, you've kind of got the same looking taillight design that you get on like the Ford Explorer, things like that, even the F-150, that similar shape. And those taillights are LED, but the rest of them are incandescent. You've got LED license plate lights, so that's lit up pretty well. Incandescent turn signal, as you can see, and now you can see the brake and reverse lights. Now let's take a look at the back end. First of all, you can actually lift the glass and uh, I'll show you that in the full review, but you can lift up this whole thing and you've got quite a bit of light back here and there's one cool little Easter egg that I'll show you in a little bit. So you can see just how well illuminated everything is. I have the seats down and you have lights up there, but we also have a cargo light right here that also has a Bronco inside of it. Take a look at that. There's just a little small illuminated Bronco. And this is actually a really practical storage area back here. First of all, this is a rubber liner. The seats have a rubber liner. The floors have a rubber liner. There's even carabiners over here. So you can hook stuff up on each side. You've got a three prong outlet, 12 volt power outlet, and just a lot of space. But wait, there's more. You see this light right here? Press that and let me show you what that does. That gives you two floodlights on this back lift gate and you can actually angle those. And those are pretty bright. I mean, if I look, you can see how well illuminated this is on the ground. So if you're like camping out back here, you can plug stuff in, you can have these spotlights and you can angle them. So you can have them pointed that way, have them pointed that way. Let me have them both pointed out so we can see just how bright that is. And just take a look at this. I mean, there's some light here already, but that's really cool. Not something you hardly ever see anywhere, external lighting like that. And to give you a different look at this paint, it's really unique. It's not like the same kind of metallic-y looking paint that you get on a lot of vehicles. It's just something different. But as you can kind of see from the cargo area, you've got a couple of bright LED lights from up above, flat storage area, or if you lift it up, your back seat is pretty well illuminated. Not much going on back here. There is a plug-in, but there's no illumination there. Um, but you actually get a couple of zipper pockets on the back of the seat. You can't really see it. I wish that there was a light from up above that would actually shine in the back of the seat because there's a few different storage cubbies and zipper pockets back there, which is pretty cool. And then here, check it out. You've got Ford's keyless touchpad entry system, which is nice. There's no special like puddle lights or anything like that. You can see the LED lights from up above. And then we've got these pretty cool seats with a Bronco inside of them. We've got some leather, almost two-tone like leather and cloth. But let's go ahead and hop in. All right, let's go ahead and start it up. Push button start. 
And then you get some really cool graphics on the screen here when you turn it off and start it on, like those little rocks there. And I'm just gonna make this a brief overview because I've got a full detailed review showing you guys pretty much everything. You've got illuminated lock buttons, you've got illuminated window and mirror controls. And then next to the steering wheel, you've got all your light controls for automatic lights, the fog lights, which are right there. Open your lift gate or at least unlock it. And then these ones on the side are to adjust your interior brightness. And when I do that, it adjusts everything, even the main screen, as you can see over there and how dark and illuminated these buttons are. So everything is connected. All the steering wheel buttons are illuminated as well, as you can see, nice, kind of a nice little sea green color and your paddle shifters even have illumination on them. But back here, we've got a pretty good size display in the middle with physical gauges over there. A lot of information that you can scroll through on here. I'll go through more of that in the full review, but there's just a bunch of different things that you can see. And then moving over, this is our standard screen. There's no smaller or larger screen. And it's the same kind of sync system that you're familiar with from Ford. If you want to adjust any light settings, go to vehicle and then go down to lighting. And once you get there, you can turn off your automatic high beams, which we'll go through in the test drive. You can also do it using the high beam switch, which I'll show you in a little bit. Then you can even turn off your daytime running lights if you want to, or decide how long the headlamps are delayed uh, before they shut off. Other than that, there's really not much. I mean, there's a lot of different settings you can do, but there's no ambient lighting in here, which is a little bit of a bummer. This does have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and a nice sound system. And you've got illuminated buttons, physical controls down here. And this one on the right here, you can push that and it can go to this kind of calm screen, or you can have it go dark. So you can turn the screen off with a button, which is nice. And check it out, this camera button, it's not a surround view camera, it's a camera that shows in front of the vehicle. And just below all that, I'm gonna turn an overhead light on so we can see there's a little storage bin, and then you've got dual zone climate control down here. All of this is easy to use. There's a little storage cubby down here and a couple of backlit uh, USB charging ports and a 12 volt power outlet. Then down here, everything is really dark because like I said, there's no ambient lighting whatsoever. You've got your shifter dial up there and then all of your controls here. Just behind the shifter, we've got a bunch of different stuff like electronic parking brake, brake hold, the GOAT modes, and you've got a few different off-road controls like a locking rear, locking your four-wheel drive. The GOAT modes are different drive modes. It stands for goes over any terrain, but let me go ahead and show you. So you spin the dial and you can go into mud and ruts. Got some cool graphics, sand, rock crawl, and it will even kind of change uh, your actual four-wheel drive controls too, but you can go to sport mode, slippery. So it's pretty cool. It's just kind of slow and delayed when you actually turn the dial. And as you can see, there's like no light right here. So when I open the center console, there's nothing. But if I turn the lights on, you can kind of see a little bit right there. And then over at the glove box, this isn't locking or anything, and there's no light inside of there, which is kind of weird, you know? Just a couple little ways they cheaped out. But that is an automatic dimming rear view mirror, which is nice to see. And it's not frameless, so there's no part of the mirror that doesn't dim, which I appreciate. But then right up above, you've got LED interior lights, so you can press on the light, the outside of the light for individual lights, or in the middle, it's illuminated to turn both of those on. The visors even have vanity lights too. And then as we take a look at the headlights, sorry about the glare, the sprinklers are on the wall, but you've got a pretty good solid beam pattern. It fades out a little bit on that passenger side, but it's or on the driver's side, but nice and strong on the passenger side. Can't wait to get these out on the road. Turn on the high beams, pretty bright right in front, a little bit drifted off to the right, and then turn the fog lights on, and there's actually some pretty good width with those fog lights. Haven't been able to use them in fog, but the other thing is, there's not adaptive lights here, but watch this. So if I just start to turn to the left, the fog light automatically turns on. If I turn to the right, the fog light will automatically turn on. So you'll get some cornering function from these headlights. I'm sorry, there's no IIHS headlight ratings, so I can't show you what those are, but we'll get these on the road. And then I wanna kinda of start giving you a longer distance here. So this is a pretty good distance out in front of me to where you can see just how well illuminated it is. There's a hill down there and off to the right next to the red line, you can see a couple red poles and a fire hydrant. So 
high beams on and they're definitely bright kind of on the, on the passenger side but not much on the driver's side so that is interesting but let's go ahead and get out onto the road all right y'all so let's get behind the wheel take this for a drive we'll start out with this point of view camera and check it out turn the blinker on and it get up, you get some light to the side right away so that's pretty cool we'll go for a little bit with this camera and then we'll switch over to that one and you'll get a nice cleaner look at the actual headlights on some dark roads but i do have a full daytime review if you want to check that out um, the point of this one is to show you how well these lights do and just give you an idea of what it's like to drive the bronco sport at night so i've got the automatic high beams on right now they're a little bit annoying because there's not just like a button or something that you can easily turn them off or on you have to actually turn your high beams on and then turn them back off in order to disable the automatic high beam function or turn it back on otherwise you have to go into the touch screen to do that but let's go ahead and get on it we've got the all-wheel drive two liter turbo in here and go and it's pretty quick this two liter turbo is definitely no joke i mean it gets up and goes pretty nicely so automatic high beams are still on the low beams are on there's a car in front of us so at least we're not blinding them and sometimes the overhead street lights are enough to keep the high beams off so i'm kind of curious if that's the case in this bronco and so far it is but these lights are pretty bright where they shine we'll see just how far they go when we get out onto a dark road in a little bit but quick note this rear view mirror is automatic dimming but the side mirror is not so neither side mirror is and that's not really something to expect in this class but the bronco is pretty fun to drive it's quick it's pretty responsive the turbo is punchy one thing I would like to see in here though is a little bit of ambiance. I mean, there's no extra light in here whatsoever. It's just the lights from the screens and buttons and all the buttons are lit up well. So that is nice, but there's no ambient lighting or no gentle glow in any area, which would be kind of nice to see, but you know, it's not a huge deal either. All right, we're about to get on the dark surface road. Let's go ahead and switch camera angles right now. So the automatic high beams are on. There is a truck in front of us off into the distance. So far, just the low beams are on. And we'll see how they do. Once we flatten out, we'll see how far reaching they are. And the high beams just turned on. I'm gonna turn those off. So the distance isn't the best it's not bad i can kind of see off into the side a little bit going around the corner but not great there's a really bright light on that's not usually on uh next to us but just to give you an idea of what those look like still the low beams here no fog lights on either and i just turned the automatic high beams back on to see how they would do with this oncoming car and they're still off so you'll get to see them turn on in just a second and they just turn back on nice and bright straight shoot in front of us very bright in front turn them off there's definitely a significant difference between the passenger side and driver side but i can see around that corner fairly well you can see the road marker reflections high beams and going to the left so these lights do a nice job they're definitely a lot better than most automatic high beams on and they just turn back off. I don't know if it's because it senses the truck in front, they just turn back on. So that's interesting. The high beams are on now, automatically. I can see really well straight out in front. You can see all those markers. They're just not very wide. Now let me turn those off and let's get a look at the peripherals. So fog lights on, fog lights off. That actually makes a pretty significant difference out into the ditches and right in front of us. What do you guys think? Those fog lights are nice. You don't have to use fog lights for fog. You can use them for wide scenarios, um, which is kind of nice to see too. Now I'm gonna turn the automatic high beams back on. 
and the high beams did turn on. Hopefully we get a little bit of oncoming traffic here in just a second, but the, the high beams are definitely bright. They do a good job. They do exactly what they're supposed to do. And you see that vehicle cross over in front of us. It didn't turn off for them so that it will blind oncoming, or not oncoming traffic, but crossing traffic. And they'll turn off at a certain speed too. All right, so automatic high beams are on. Got a car coming up here. And sometimes going around a corner like that, they will turn on real quick and then turn back off. But they stayed off the whole time, so I didn't blind anybody. And they just kicked back on and turned back off. So they were perfectly responsive there. So thankfully, I didn't blind anybody. Uh, some cars, they tend to blind people, <laughs> you know, inadvertently just for a short period of time. But these have been good, and I have not had anybody flash me. So far, so good. Low beams are staying on, and the fog lights do fantastic. And the headlights could be, I wish they could reach a little bit further, but they still do a pretty good job. Uh, let me know what you guys think down below, but leave your comments and be sure to subscribe if you like these night videos and leave a thumbs up because it really helps me out. Thank you so much and have a great night.